Hi guys, previously at C4C, all the bonding work I did on Elos, a lot of work, but now we are in end of July and I got a lot still to do, but I show you what I did in this last month. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the new episode of the series Restory, a fantastic Alberasi 312. Before I introduce you in the new episode, I want to show you some shins that I shot inside a pair of factories with deals with professional painted and varnish. I varnished some pieces of the furniture of Alos and all the floor and I tried to recover the original color in order to give a very nice smooth professional looking. You can see here the varnish, his two hand of uh, polyurethanic uh, uh, varnish, very strong, especially made for the floor. And here the result, great. I use a color varnish to match the original floor that was installed on Alos and the result is exactly the same. At the beginning of July, Andrea helped me to install the new windlass. I used the La France X2, 1500 uh, watts. First of all, this is the old chain that was uh, use it on Alos. Uh, I'm looking at the moment to get a very nice uh, piece of chain to trust on the windlass. We will cut it and uh, we can connect the anchor because we need to check exactly which is the direction of the chain and the anchor when the anchor is in the bow. So in this way we can perfectly center the drum of the windlass. Andrea in his life installed about 1000 2000 windlass and a lot of experience so I'm in a very good hand to do this work I'm at the moment I'm only looking what Andrea did because I need to uh, learn how to do you can see the piece of tech is the base that I will use on the windlass is uh, about 2 cm uh, thick is a very good quality burma fix and is uh, make with three layer of uh, wood and we uh, glue all together with epoxy. Center the windlass on the deck is a very delicate stuff. If you make a mistake your windlass doesn't work very well. So we check exactly the direction of the chain because after that we need to make the two holes one for the shaft and the other for the chain. To get a perfect shape of the base of the windlass, I download from the Lofrance website the AutoCAD files. After that, I upload in the CNC milling machine at Franco factory and the milling machine cut perfectly the same shape uh, of the base of the windlass. In this case, I got an exactly and perfect piece made for purpose. Andrea is pay a lot of attention where to drill. Andrea thinks about half an hour where to install the base of the windlass and the windlass. So we pay a lot of attention. We can make a mistake. If we drill a wrong hole, we are completely fucked. No way. So we think a lot. And now Andrea, after the side, the exact place, start to drill the first hole. In the last year, I completely reinforced the deck just where the windlass will be installed because I want a very strong surface and very thick place so I don't have any flexion of the deck. I want the maximum safety. You can see how big is the hole and how thick is the deck. Okay guys, first hole did and now we go with the second. We try the windlass and after that we try the chain and the direction of uh, the bow roller. We need to uh, align all the stuff on the bow roller.
after found the correct uh, direction of the base of the windlass and the position, we start to drill the second big hole where the chain drop inside the locker. Andrea is assigned a second hole, the chain hole. We fix the base on the deck and after that we start to drill the th those holes are for the bolts uh, that maintain the windlass in position. I'm always quite nervous when it's time to drill the deck. You know, you can make a mistake. You ruin all the work and all the cost of the tick. So pay a lot of attention. And now we go with the hole for the chain. Da -da -da -da. Quite nervous. It's quite an effort to make a hole in the deck uh, because it's very thick, 40 millimeter of thick plus fiberglass plus uh, uh, our stuff plus fiberglass again. Woohoo! Andrea, I need to drill from inside the chain locker because from here it make too much difficult. Hey, here we go, another huge piece of uh, deck. And now we make the first test if all are correct. I make my own bolts, especially make for this uh, type of uh, work. Uh, Andrea, another friend that makes stainless steel, he make the correct size of those bolts. I don't use all thread bolts that was originally um, on the setup of the windlass, but I asked to Andrea, my friend that worked the stainless steel, to make my own. Use a 10 millimeter stainless steel rod, and after that, I thread the end of uh, each side in the correct uh, length. So now I'm sure that my bolts are very strong, especially uh, when passed through the deck and I will not have problem in the strength of uh, those uh, bolts. I won't do the best for Alos because I don't want to come back in the work in the future. You can see uh, the windlass is perfect aligned with the bow roller, so the chain make a very straight line from the drum and the bow roller. So it will be for sure work in the correct uh, way. This is the last test we did me Andrea to check if the chain is correct and make a very straight line from the bow roller to the windlass. You can see the line, yes, perfect align. Of course, this is not my hanker. This is the original CQR that I don't like it, of course. My one will be a spade 20 kilos, but it's very important to check if the chain work well. Other things I need to do is avoid the, the uh, shaft of the hanker hit the deck to avoid to ruin my tick deck. Uh, we'll come back to this problem soon, not now, but I need to figure out how to protect my tick. This was the original passage for the cable of the lights, is a hose and some fiberglass. So I need to take out this part. I need to take out this part here because the engine touched just where Andrea signed when we put so I go straight here, take out all, all this stuff here, a, a little here. I make a lot of reinforce here for the chain, 45 degrees inclination here. 
and for sure I put some carbon fiber to make strong and rigid. We have uh, about four centimeter thick, uh, you can see, four centimeter thick uh, deck and also there is a lot of uh, rainforest here that I did two years ago. Whoa. Fain help a lot. Okay guys, it's time to use the mask and the glasses because too much uh, uh, dust and won't ruin my lungs. Uh, Covid is enough, I don't want more. Start to cure the epoxy, just here and there. Go inside. I put some carbon fiber here to protect and make strength. And we let it cure. And here we are in the second part of the video, Andrea and I, we start to install the cleats. Those cleats are not the original one because are not more available. So I bought from Albert Rossi those new ones. Those type of cleats are just the new series that they made and are very similar to the original one. Very nice and very sturdy. I save only one hole that permit me to get the correct position of the cleats and the other holes I already fill up with epoxy. So me and Andrea now we need to find the original hole, start to drill inside the original hole and after that make other four holes. Uh, also this task is very very important and you pay attention because you can make mistake. But also in this case Andrea is with me so I'm very relaxed. We need to check the exact position to get a very nice looking. It's time to use the long uh, drill to make the hole. And this is the second one. You can see. Whoa, job done. And now it's time to test the original long bolts that was used. I completely restored them because they are very good quality stainless steel and now we check if they fit the hole that we did. Yes, they fit and now we start to drill the last of the four holes that maintain and fix the clits in final position. The outside holes are not straight but they gave a little inclination from outside to inside, this to avoid to stay too much close to the hull of the boat. You can see the effort we do for drill all the thick part of the boat. My God, it's about eight centimeters thick. And now you can see all the bolts are installed, not fixed, of course, because I need to use some beauty, but in this way we check that they all fit perfect the cleats. Ooh, first cleats gone. Okay, we have just finished to install the stern cleats and now we go in the mid cleats. Andrea from inside is drilling the tick and with this piece of uh, uh, wood I protect uh, the tick to ruin when the drill pass through. And now I'm threading the hole of the backing plate where you attach the lifeline. This stainless steel plate is just under one leg of the aft pulpit. So I need to thread with M8 and after that use some bolts that take in position this plate. Okay guys, one thing I want to say to you, I'm not threading the tick, I'm threading the fiberglass as was originally, uh, the fiberglass of the gun whale. So this was the original Halberassi setup. My new caping rail is very thick, so for this reason I need to get a very long uh, bolts. For this reason I ordered in England uh, a 25 bolts with 7 centimeter length 
so I'm sure that they will uh, catch the fiberglass just under the teak. This is the first attempt to check if there is uh, uh, the correct uh, dip of the thread, but you can see the bolt doesn't go inside the stainless steel, so I need to take out the bolt and make another deep uh, hole, and after that, thread again. That is quite hard work. Okay guys, job done. Now the bolt is perfect insert on the stainless steel. Now I need to thread the other hole and check if the thread is in the correct dip and after that test for the bolts. Oh, it's quite a long way. Okay guys, job done. I don't want to come back to this uh, backing plate for the lifeline. It's installed forever, for 30 years. Something happened, stay there, because it's very strong. And now we move on the cleats. Other works to do, long works. Now I need to thread the holes, because we have the through bolts here, you see, and the thread M8 here. So I need to thread those holes. We start in the other side of the, the boat. You see, I already, already prepared the thread. It's a very long one because you need a long one and you start to thread the fiberglass and the blue steel that I already fill up the hole. So I have a very strong bonding and strong and strong thread it's quite a long job thread the fiberglass for the cleats and for other stuff because you need to find the correct dip of the hole to thread so you need to try the bolts unbolt try again if you find the correct tension of uh, the bolts on the stuff after that you're okay And now it's time to countersink so the butyl stay there and make watertight the bolts. And now I will use an epoxy to protect the tick from the aluminium and get a perfect bonding with the butyl. 
So now I won't explain one thing for you. I use some epoxy add with the teak powder because I need to make a very nice base for the cleats. Why? Because if I use epoxy, the butyl works very well on the epoxy. If I use the butyl on the teak, the teak is oil, it is possible that don't stitch very well on the wood. Here guys, I made a mistake. I drill it with 8 mm instead of 6.75 and then thread it with M8. So for this reason, I had to fill up with epoxy resin and then I will have to drill again with the exact uh, drill and after that thread with M8. Shit happens sometimes and you need to pay a lot of attention, but nothing special. It's a very easy error to fix. Here we are in the other side of the boat, still prepare the base for the cleats. Uh, I follow the contour of the cleats and use some epoxy to protect the tick and permit the beauty to work well. And here we are, the epoxy cured and now make the correct dip of the hole that I need to thread. This is a 6.75 mm drill. I clean with some hair and after that I start to thread with M8. Okay guys, now it's time to use the butyl and fix the clit in position. Those are the original clits and you can see my face here when I just finish to take out the old anodization, make shining and after that you will see here the new nice result with the new anodization. So now it has the clits which is the correct uh, uh, installation. You can see on the right, the bolts, the new bolts. You can see those are the original Alberasi bolts. And now I make this one from Aku, made in England, aku.co.uk. You can buy 25 piece for 50 bucks and you can have your correct length. It's good quality stuff. Stainless steel 316L for the marine environment. So now I have the 7 cm long bolts, the same was installed in 86. So I have the same looking of the original bolt, because you need to maintain as much as possible the original looking. Now it's time to clean with acetone, spread the butyl on the base of the cleats, uh, wrap the bolts and start to install my fittings. And I start to cut the butyl and prepare all the cleats completely covered with butyl so for sure I have no water entering in the hole as was originally. Uh, I trust very well in the butyl because I use it in the previous board in any single bolts and no one drop of water entering the board. So I use the tape butyl for the through bolts and in the bolts that I need to be screw on the fiberglass, I use the cartridge butyl, very soft, but has the same result. So it's more easy that don't, when you screw the bolts inside, the butyl don't come out, but stay in the threads and you have no water entering. And here I am in the other side, I'm drilling the hole that uh, I already did a mistake before with a 6.75 drill, and after that I will thread it. It's time to thread with M8 and after that I will install the clit. You can see those very long bolts are original made in the 86. I only made 
the external bolts that need to screw on the fiberglass. And now is the time to use the beauty lotion in this clit. I clean without acetones all the bolts and after that I start to use the beauty. The beauty is very stitchy. It's a very good product from Arbo. I trust in this product that I already used and give me a lot of satisfaction. At the moment I prepare everything, wait a friend that keep me the, the screwdriver outside and inside I will tight the bolt but for the moment to avoid says of the steel and a future problem I use the PEF gel originally Albert Ross used the washer to make the baking plate for the bolts through bolts of the cleats now I use a plate of stainless steel because it's more shine more beautiful and more strong I prefer this setup so guys I would like to thank you for watching my video if you like my video please thumb up and not forget to subscribe to my channel we see in the next episode because there is a lot a lot to show you and you will enjoy a lot so we see in the next episode ciao